Yes, good evening. What's shaking, everybody? Dr. Sean is in the house from Project Forgive. How are you doing? I love tonight's topic. Every Monday night, I come up with some kind of a topic. And um, this one tonight is on effective apologizing. And uh, here, let me put on my glasses because I got some notes. I got to be able to see what you're saying, what you're doing. Hello, hello, hello. And it's this is really about how to give a meaningful and heartfelt apology with someone you care about or someone you work with that it's important to re do reparations with the relationship. This is not a talk for people that need, that want to receive an apology. That's not what this is. This is about you and when you're doing your actual apology. And there is a theme to it. There is a formula. It's actually really easy and you get really good at it when you start practicing. Hey, Judy, I see ya. And um, as we get started, I just wanna do a couple of shout outs for our ability to do what we do. And tonight I am giving a huge shout out to General Motors. General Motors, specifically a man named Reggie Humphreys, has, Humphrey has been an amazing champion for Project Forgive. I'm talking amazing. The first time he saw the, the activity, the apology you'll never receive, which is our signature tool, he just went, dang, Dr. Sean, dang. And he became the first company that came on board that saw forgiveness and apologizing as really important in corporate America. So I am forever indebted to him. He is all about inclusivity. Um, diversity, bringing folks together, and equity, and his company is General Motors. I actually went out and bought uh, a Buick Encore because I could not not support General Motors. And so huge shout out to General Motors. And I really believe that there is no such thing as companies. There's people who run companies. And I have worked with a lot of corporations and GM is definitely at the top of my list of a company that practices what they preach. They do, they practice what they preach, and the leadership there that I've worked with has been absolutely amazing. So, giving a huge shout out to General Motors tonight. Um, also, tonight, I'm giving out prizes, gonna give out some masks. I'm gonna give a white version and a black version and a book. I'll grab it over, you know, as we get going. I do the prizes at the very end, so someone's gonna win something tonight. Unfortunately, it's for the U.S. only, so forgive. So if you're in the United States, you get to win. And if you're new, you gotta tell us so we can welcome you and other people on the, on the Facebook Live can say, hey, welcome, we're so glad you're here. So let us know if you're new. A couple of other things, our Monday Joy emails are just shifting, I think in two weeks. We do daily emails now to give you a dose of joy every day because joy is our thing. You know, joy is a choice. How do you find joy in the midst of all this strife? And our emails are going to be shifting to Mondays only to set off your week, which you would think is a good idea. We also have Joy is a Habit Facebook group. If you're inspired, please go. Just so you know anything I mention, I will put the link here so you have easy peasy access. Sound good? Also, if you're part of a progressive company, if you work in a company that hires virtual live presenters, send them my way, refer us. We are so good at what we do, and we do amazing conversations around forgiveness in the workplace, high pressure communication, DE&I conversations, and it's usually like the leadership development or the HR or the marketing folks or supply chain will hire us. So if you want to recommend us to your company, we'd love to come into your company either live or virtually. Let's see if anything else I got to say. All right, before I go, let's see who's here in the house. Everybody's, hey, hello, look at you guys welcoming each other. Hi, Terry. She lives in the house. Linda, Doug, trying to reconnect. Are you serious? Okay, here we go. Anybody else been having issues with their their um, their internet? Boy, it's been very spotty the last couple of days. Hey, Shira, Sharia, Sharia. Welcome, you're so glad we're that you're here. Oh, uh, Judy, I'm so glad you get compliments on your masks. Um, our masks say uh, kindness is contagious. They're very, very cool. Hey, Evelyn, I can see you guys. Let's see, are you guys ready for this conversation on effective apologizing? I can see it spotty. Forgive the spotty internet. I've got the highest level. I don't know why it does what it does, but it's just what's up, right? Let's see what else you guys are saying. Coming in the house, everyone's saying hi to each other. Beautiful. You're welcome, Nepal. Oh, hi from Nepal. Hi, Chandra. Chandra Kanta. How beautiful. 
where have I been? Where have you been? I've been here, Mutasam. <laughs> I've been here every week. Oh, you might be talking about the daily lives. I stopped doing the daily lives just because it ran its course and it was time to move on and come back to our just our Monday nights. Hi, Ruthann. It's nice to see you. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I want to tell you about this guy. I saw this guy, Robert Gordon. Um, I believe he's a doctor. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. He's a psychologist. He did a great talk on the power of the apology, which I loved. I'll put up a link so if you want to check it out. And um, he, like many other researchers, including myself, see, see an apology as a three-step process. I'm going to walk you through that, through it. Um, where he got me is he gave some stats and some data, and this is what he said. Research shows up to 70% of our brain functions outside of our awareness. So 70% of the stuff that's going on, we're just not privy to or just not grasping or seeing or are aware of. And most of our flaws are out of awareness. It's very true. And in short, we can really be clueless about how we impact others, especially those whom we love, right? And our brains are not wired for lasting intimacy. I loved that statement. Our brains are not wired for lasting intimacy because we're, we're actually like, um, when you think about Neanderthals, Neanderthals were hunters and gatherers and they were about keeping the community together. And it was always about live, survive, eat, have sex, live, survive, eat, have sex, procreate. That's what Neanderthals really were. Um, and it requires emotional intelligence or emotional maturity to make our relationships last, which includes effective apologizing. Now, Given that our loving relationships are messy by nature, because they are, the power of the apology is huge. So that's what we're going to focus on. And I'll make sure I put up that link for the TED Talk. Okay, so here's the problem. Okay, I like to frame this as problem-solution. So we're going talk about the problem first. You did something that hurt or offended someone, someone that you deeply care about. That's where I want to focus. Someone that you're in relationship with or you're forced to be in relationship with, with like in a work environment. Um, maybe you violated a boundary of someone close to you. Maybe you didn't even know that boundary existed. Um, it could be what you didn't do. Maybe you didn't do something you said you were going to do. Um, not like, ret like not return a report into a boss who was expecting it. Um, or you didn't clean up after yourself when you said you would. That list goes on and on. It also could be someone coming to you with a past hurt. Um, from many years ago and the person is still upset and letting you know they're still upset and you may not even remember the incident or the situation I've had that happen where someone says I you know I need to talk to you about this this happened 10 years ago and I'm like okay I just open up my heart and it's something I have no clue what they're even talking about it was completely out of my awareness has that ever happened for you um, you're not alone. It happens all the time. So before I give you this three-step process, it's really, really easy, okay? A um, couple of things I want you to remember um, and things to consider before I give this solution. Now, depending upon the situation, how grievous the transgression is perceived, okay? Um, you don't want to give one too small, like, sorry, and you don't want to give one too big for if the, the crime doesn't match. You know, I'm trying to think of the right words like, Oh, I'm so sorry that I ate your last Reese's peanut butter cup. That's because that could, you could overdo it, right? And so careful with that, just to be conscious of that. And just so you know, the best apologies always have flaws. They're imperfect. It doesn't matter. It's really about being authentic. That's really what's so important because you can't fake authenticity. And the other thing that's really important is to look them in the eye. Sometimes when we're apologizing, our old shame creeps in. And so we like become eye avoidant. And looking someone in the eye and being so exposed in that moment, no matter how big the transgression goes a long way, okay? And sometimes you actually need to get permission to give an apology, and, um, and it might be something like this. Um, because if you're gonna about to have an uncomfortable conversation for someone, you really wanna flag them that that's what you're doing. Um, whatever I say, just so you know, I copy and paste it, it will be in the notes. So you don't have to write anything down if you don't want to, it'll be in the notes. I do that as soon as the line's over, okay? All right, so you might be, prior to saying an apology, you may say something like, you know, something's been on my mind, Janet, and I know that I've hurt you, 
and I'd like to talk to you about that. Is now a good time to do that? Because if someone was hurt by something that you did say, say or didn't say or didn't do, you want to ease them in to a vulnerable conversation. And when you break the ice like that and get permission to have that conversation, it really opens the doors of communication and opens up intimacy. It's really, really exquisite. Are you guys relating to some of the things that I'm saying? Let me check real quick before I go into the three steps. I love these three steps. And I love things in threes. Our brain grasps in threes. Let's see what you guys are saying. Hey, Ray's from Cincinnati. Getting some thumbs up. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Getting some hearts. Perfect. Are you relating? Let me see what you guys are. Let me see if there's anything I need to pay attention to in the moment. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Some people will never apologize because they will never admit that what they were wrong. You're absolutely right. And that's that's not what we're going to focus on tonight, Sheila. And you're spot on. Tonight we're going to focus on us and our ability to apologize, right? Yeah, some people will never apologize. That's why we created the tool, accepting the apology you'll never receive. So you can get some um, peace and some peace of mind. I will, Ruth. His name was, how about, I'll put him in the notes. It's Gordon. I want to say Dr. Gordon. I'll put, put it right in the notes so you have it, okay? Thanks for saying that. Um, okay. The three parts of a healthy apology. There's three parts. Acknowledgement, empathy slash remorse, and then restitution. It's it's actually really simple. Acknowledgement, restitution, uh, excuse me, acknowledgement, remorse, or empathy. Let me just start over. Three steps. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Here, I'll do it right now. I'm so sorry. I'm stumbling over my words. I was getting fast ahead of myself, and... I wasn't being very present. Will you forgive me? And I'll work on that. Okay, I'll work on that. And will you forgive me? I just did an example of one. Acknowledgement, remorse and empathy, and then restitution. So another way to say this, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. Let me start over with these three steps. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm moving too fast. I'm not staying too present in the moment. And I commit to getting more grounded when I'm giving these steps so I'm not rushing through it, will you forgive me? That was a perfect example right in the moment, okay? So acknowledgement is just being able to say, you know, you see your actions, remember 70% of people that aren't even aware, you see your actions and you're, you're committed to making a, a sincere apology and you always start with I, always start with I. Acknowledgement always starts with I'm sorry, here's what's going on, Here's what I'm going to do to make it better. Will you forgive me? Remorse and empathy is just really elongating or, um, what's the right word, uh, emphasizing and explaining what is going on there. No excuses. This isn't about excuses. This is about to give more information um, to flesh out the context. So what would be an example? I saw one example. Okay. Like the acknowledgement, Lisa, I'm so sorry I said that to you. Um, I don't like myself for when I become, when I'm that reactive. I've been getting really reactive lately, especially during COVID. And, uh, you know, I was kind of harsh how I said that. And, you know, I, I know how much that can hurt. And so that would be an acknowledgement. Restitution means you're taking an action. Make sure you give me notes if you got an example and you want me to use a real life example because I'm about to give several examples, okay? Restitution is about the action phase. Sometimes there's no action involved, um, and there's to go the extra mile with the restitution might be um, an example that I saw that was really great. A husband wasn't listening to the wife, and he apologized. I'm so sorry, my honey bunny, Lisa. Um, I wasn't paying attention. I got distracted. How about let's take a breath, um, let, let me make some tea, that would be restitution, let's make some tea, let's sit down and talk about this so I can really gather and hear what you're saying because you're important to me. Would you forgive me? Restitution is that action step, okay? Making sense? Give me some thumbs up so I know this is making sense. Give me some indicator that I'm on the right track, okay? I've got some great examples and I actually wrote them out. So what if you told a lie? Okay, remember, this is effective apologizing for you. 
not for you going to your mother and saying, oh, I just saw this live on effective apologizing. I need an apology about blah, blah, blah. You need to do this three steps right now with me. That's not what this is. That does not work, actually, even though you really want them to do that. We'll have that as another topic another time, okay? Um, this is about you and you apologizing. It's all about you. Thanks, Sandra. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's say you told a lie. Who has never told a lie or who has told a lie? I've told a lie, okay? Sometimes you do it because you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Sometimes you're avoiding, whatever. Sometimes we tell lies, okay? And so it might be, uh, Simone, I'm sorry I lied to you about blank. I was dishonest to begin with and didn't know how to fix it. And I realized I need to come clean with you and I'm really sorry. In the future, I'm gonna to stretch to tell you about my discomfort. I know that'll be hard for me to do and I'm willing to challenge myself because I love you. Will you forgive me for lying to you? I love that apology. So you guys are saying to just you know what every example will be in the notes, okay? Here's another one. What about if you hurt somebody's feelings? Have you ever hurt somebody's feelings? I have. And this is the thing too. Sometimes we hurt people's feelings because we didn't know it wouldn't hurt their feelings. And the reason that we apologize is because we care about this person and we're learning in an intimate conversation what they like and don't like, right? Yeah, no, Lisa, I was just, I just pulled Lisa out of my butt. <laughs> Not literally out of my butt, but out of my back pocket, okay? Okay, great. Thanks for that, Maria. That's perfect. Okay. Now, let's say you hurt somebody's feelings, okay? You might say, I'm sorry I hurt your feelings when I said blah, blah, blah. Okay, it's really important that you verbalize what they're upset about. That's really, really important. That's part of the acknowledgement process. Um, so, I'm sorry that I didn't respect your boundary, or I'm sorry I hurt your feelings when I did blank. Uh, I had a feeling it did, and I didn't address it in the moment because I wasn't quite sure. Your feelings matter to me, and I'll work on being more sensitive in how I respond to you. Will you forgive me? Excellent apology. Okay, you're welcome, Lisa. Okay, now what about a boundary issue? I love boundaries. Anybody else love boundaries? I love boundaries. And, um, and it takes a while. I've done lots of talks on boundaries that it takes time for people, especially people that, you've, that have been in your life for many years to set new boundaries. It takes time, okay? So you gotta give yourself that, um, that leeway, okay? All right, well, um, I'm sorry that I didn't respect your boundary about blank. You told me three times already, and the truth is I keep forgetting about blank. I'm not sure what to do about it, besides maybe put a post-it note on the fridge so I can remember. I'm willing to talk about what other ideas you have to help me remember. Will you forgive me? Exquisite. How about if you didn't do something that you said you were gonna do, an integrity issue? Not integrity is a moral issue, but more about when you commit to something, are you your word, right? Um, so here's an example for that. And I'm gonna, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some other beautiful things to say in between and I'll tell you when I'm doing that, okay? I'm sorry I'm for not doing blank when I said that I would do it. I'm clear that I struggle with following up with you and quite honestly with others too. I'm working hard on correcting this in all areas of my life and especially with you because you are, and then here's a fill in the blank, you are the love of my life, the best friend anyone could have, dear to my heart, an important part of the family, a colleague I deeply respect and admire, okay? Fill in those blanks. And it's really cool when you can be very heartfelt in sharing what they mean to you um, authentically. And while I'm working on this, if you notice that I'm falling short with my commitment, would you be willing to also talk to me about it? And I promise not to become defensive with you when you're sharing that with me. This is really important to me. You're important to me. I love you. Will you forgive me? Excellent. And when these get posted up, you can copy and paste them. I put lots of stuff like on my walls of things that are, are important to me or things that I like to help me remember, okay? Now here's the thing. Apologizing can make things right, actually sometimes instantaneously, 
and it doesn't always fix everything. This is not a one-shot deal and, oh, you apologize, it's over. It doesn't work like that. It depends on the person you're in relation to the phone alone. There we go. Okay, sorry about the disconnection. Um, here's an example. My husband, he's an Amazon seller. He's very good at it. He knows all those PPC codes and all that, and he helps people set up their Amazon accounts. But when he starts talking about it, I just... I want to scream, okay, because the, and I don't mean it in a bad way, it's just I have, I have no interest in all those details, it's like mine, I kind of like, and I kind of zone out, and he's told me this many times, and he most effectively said it to me about a week ago, and he said, you know, when you do that, when you zone out, when I'm sharing something so important, it really hurts me, it hurts my heart, and I'm like, oh, I don't want to hurt my honey bunny's heart. Do I hate that stuff? Yes. Can I open up my heart to receive this from my husband because I care about him? Yeah, I can. And I, and my apology might be, you know what, honey bunny? I really heard what you said about how my zone out on all those details. I know you get it about me in the details. And you know what? Because you're the most important relationship in my life, and I quote Grey's Anatomy, you're my person, anyone who watches crazy as a day out of me. And um, I'm going to deepen my attention when you share and really effort this because I'm really hearing and really can feel how important this is to you. And the last thing I want you to feel is like I don't care about the stuff that's important to you. So will you forgive me? I love you so much. And I've had that conversation, a version of it. I will do it a couple of times with him because this is going to be an effort on my part. This is not natural for me to want to hear all those details, you know. Um, and he's working on giving me less details on his end, which is a beautiful thing in a committed relationship, right? And, um, and Michael, I love that you said I make this sound so easy. And, um, I, and Ruth, I love what you're saying. Thank you for My brain is so full right now. Thank you for understanding. Can you give it to me in tidbits because I'm, my brain is so full? And uh, that's a beautiful way to say it. And Michael, what you're sharing, that I make it sound easy, this actually has never been easy. It is easy now from practice. I've practiced this over and over and over again. And my commitment to be intimate with the people around me overrides everything else. And it sounds like when you first start doing it, it's going to be really awkward. And that's okay. That's why it's important to make that eye contact. That's why important important for you to accept that it doesn't have to be perfect not even a little bit it just has to be heartfelt and a real sign of efforting right yeah yeah you're right Mimi it's because of practice yep yeah oh yay and it also it's you know the other piece is when I share about those details like with my husband in particular I see Nadine sharing this with all the financials and stuff my husband is also sensitive to providing me so many details um, because I can't hear all those details. I just can't. I've got too many tabs open with how my hard wiring is. So he's more sensitive to that too so he can get his needs met, right? All right, I'll come in a minute and see what you guys are saying. All right, what else do I want to get in here? Um, I mentioned already that you might have a transgression that you might have to apologize for several times. And here's why because one of the reasons why because maybe the person who needs that apology from you it's a loaded frickin topic okay <laughs> and it's and sometimes it's about their trauma and it's then their trauma is attached to it so you maybe you tipped over a bunch of stuff that's incomplete and um, here's an here's a perfect example for me one of the things my mother needed before she passed is she needed me to apologize to her for, in her perception, keeping my children away from her. In her eyes, she never got to be a grand grandparent because I ruined the relationship, okay? That was her reality. And the truth was, I was a young mother, and the truth for me, the truth for her is still true. You got that? The truth for me is I was a young mother going to recover 12 step recovering programs, going to therapy, working on working on recovering from 
being molested as a child, quite honestly. And I had therapy and therapists who were telling me, do not leave my children alone with family members because of the incest in the family. I didn't handle it like I would now as a 56-year-old grandma. I handled it as a 20-year-old trying to figure out how to recreate patterns in my generational family system. So it wasn't perfect by any stretch. I uh, had supervised visiting, I didn't call it supervised visiting, but I was always with my mom or someone else is with my mom with the kids. My mother wasn't the perpetrator, that's not what I'm trying to say. It's just that it was complicated. And I really was trying new ways for my children because I know that children's entire self-esteem is built by the time they're five years old. And I learned that in college. No one in my family knows that. And so I was trying new ways of parenting my children. And so that early on, pain for my mother manifested even when the kids were teenagers and now they're adults in their 30s. And she didn't contact them for 20 years because she was so angry at me for not letting her see the grandchildren. Now, am I accountable for the decades long of that? No. Am I accountable for apologizing to her for her experience of grandparent? Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the greatest gifts I gave her and gave myself in her last year of her life was repeatedly having this conversation about how sorry I was that it wasn't different. You can even feel my emotion now, my remorse now. I wished it would have been different. Couldn't have been. I didn't have the skills. I knew that I couldn't let my children be molested. It wasn't going to happen, right? And I, my mother needed that from me. Yeah. So sometimes we apologize repeatedly for massive things that have to do with someone else's trauma too. And here's the thing: real leaders can apologize even when they've not done something wrong. And that's another topic for another day. Um, one of the other things, too, that I'm noticing, like my, um, my husband is deeply attached to our dog, Fergie. She's not doing well. She has heart issues. She has a lot of issues. And um, I'm not grieving Fergie like he is. I lost my mother, my father, and my sister in a very short period of time. I'm griefful, like seriously. Would I be sad when Fergie dies? Absolutely. Do I have the same experience as my husband? No, not even close. And I can tell he gets upset that I'm not reacting the same way he is with the high intensity of taking care of Fergie. I did caretaking for several years. I, I just have a different experience. Both our experiences are valid and they're different. And being conscious of my husband's needs, because this is really important to him, and when it's important to him, it's important to me. And so I'm being very sensitive and working harder at being more sensitive about that for him and even apologizing when I don't respond the way that he needs to, right? Oh, great, Nadine. I'm glad I'm hitting some good chords here, okay? Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I wrote down here, down the road apologizing when you did nothing wrong. I also saw an article that I really liked on apologizing. This is summing it up and seeing what you guys are saying. Um, the why, because, and and. So there's three elements. Why, because, and. That's another great way to categorize it in your brain for very simple apologies. Sorry that I couldn't be at your party because I had a report on deadline and I'll be sure to come next time. Sorry, why? Sorry that I couldn't be at your party because I had a report on deadline and I'll be sure to come next time. That's another very simple apology for a non-dramatic thing that's going on. And the others are for when there's a little more drama. And I don't say drama in a derogatory way at all. It just has a little more energy to it. Maybe some trauma attached to it. Maybe it happened a long time ago. Maybe the person just really needs you to validate them. It happens, you know, there's lots of pieces to it, okay? Let's see what you guys are saying. Is there anything I need to address? Let me look before I do our uh, next week and prize winner and all that good stuff. Let's see. You know, Michael, I love that you asked that. 
after about, Michael is asking, did your mom receive it well? It took her, I would say, at least 10 times of having a heartfelt apology. Because remember, from my estimation, the family dynamic, and this is probably TMI, the family dynamic was I was the mother. I took care of my mother at a very young age. And we've had these conversations. I know many of you can relate to this, the dynamic in the family system with a narcissistic parent. And I don't say that derogatory. I just say that matter-of-factly as a doctor, okay? Um, the narcissistic tendencies, I parented my mother since I was a little girl. So it makes perfect sense to me that at, as she's leaving the planet, that I would continue parenting her. The difference is, the difference was the authenticity and my ability to accept that my mother couldn't parent me. That was a huge revelation. You know, like we keep trying to go to the hardware store to get milk and there's no milk there. And um, I'm reading a great book right now, actually I'll add it on here, it's called Daughter Detox. When you were raised by a mother that just couldn't love you and the impact, there's so much research on that, that we really need, our, particularly our mothers, to validate us. And when she doesn't, or when she can't, we seek that our whole lives. And one of the things I was on a journey with, with the last year of my mother spending almost day, every day with her, was that I wanted to break up that dynamic so it wouldn't happen to my grandchildren so that they have more access and more freedom from trying to get their needs met from someone who could never meet them. And that is pure gold in my world, right? That's like gold, right? Love that you're asking that. So yes, my mother eventually, and actually when I knew that she finally accepted my apology is when she, you know, usually when I'd apologize, she'd say like, hmm, okay, <laughs> okay. I'm laughing now. Sometimes I'd go home and cry because I was just heartbroken that I just could not break through with her. It was just being unstoppable with her in that process. And um, when she finally accepted it and it felt complete for as complete as it could be, when she said, all right, Sean, I want to let you know I deeply accept and, um, and she added in Jesus' name. And my mother was deeply religious. And whenever she would bring Jesus or God into like a very vulnerable conversation in her vulnerability, I knew it was genuine because she had a deep relationship um, with God. So uh, that's when I knew I didn't need to do it anymore. Make sense? Okay, let's see what we got. Again, a couple more things are being said. Let me see. Yeah, I'm so glad, Lynn. That makes me, my that gives my heart a, a oomph. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Angela. Let's see if you're saying anything I need to address. Anything, hearts, beautiful gold. I'm with you, Rebecca. Yeah. What if you parented the best you know how and your kids still think you didn't parent them? Doesn't that make me a narcissist? You know what the best advice I'm gonna give you right now is every time your child comes to you with their upset, your only response is, oh, tell me more. I care about your feelings. They need to get it out. They need to get it out. Whatever that dynamic is, you just hold space, hold space, hold space. Let go of any of your needs, even if they're adults. That will do, that will work miracles. Oh, sweetheart, angel, thank you for telling me that. Will you say more about that so I can fully understand? I love you. I care about how you feel and your feelings are deeply important to me. Those adult children are looking for validation. And that's not just, come, that doesn't just come from dysfunctional family systems or trauma. Every family deals with validation issues. It's a human thing, okay? So you just say, tell me more, Mimi. That's your words, tell me more. And um, it'll be exquisite. I heard never say you're sorry, is that true? No, no, so I'm sorry is very appropriate. Nope, that was a misunderstanding. Yeah, hey Nadine, I want to see what you're saying about your parents in a car wreck. Let me see if it'll let me. Yeah, that that's that's a biggie, Nadine. That's a biggie. Um, that's gonna that's a lot of internal work. Yeah, we'll see how that evolves over time. Okay. Some say saying sorry means you're weak. Kay Kaylee Ann says that. 
Yep, some people do say that. And some people say I have brown eyes. And I'm like, no, I got blue eyes. I got beautiful blue eyes. So saying you're sorry means you're weak. You're weak. I would, that is just in my world, just not even close to reality. People say things all the time that aren't true. <laughs> like, oh, got that. Um, let's say someone says to you, Callie Ann, if, you know, someone says, saying sorry means you're weak. Oh, yeah, that's one interpretation. Yeah, I got that. I got that. Thanks for letting me know. There's nothing to defend. There's nothing to do about that. People believe what people believe. It's all good. And some people believe I have brown eyes. Got it? Okay. Excellent. Okay, let's see. Okay. Oh, Laura. Yeah, I'm with you, Laura. I totally get that. I totally get that. And I didn't know it either until I went through it. So I'm, I, uh, I, I just love you. Beautiful. Let's see. Okay, let's see. This is what I've tried to do, Mimi. I'm a guessing, tell me more. Not only do you need to say it, tell me more, you need to be it. It's an ontological conversation. Ontology is the study of your being because how you say something is just as important as what you say. So I could say, tell me more, <laughs> which is don't tell me no more. Oh, sweetheart, please tell me more. Very different than tell me more. What else you got? You could have that shaming edge to you. There's all different pieces and moving parts to it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Kaylee Ann, if I'm saying your name wrong, please forgive. The question I have for you, you're saying, I don't think it's weak, but why would they think saying sorry is weak? What the question that comes up for me for you is, and it's non-derogatory, it's not, it's just a really gentle, beautiful question is why you think saying, why that's so important to you, what they think. You know, is it your mother saying it to you? Is your father saying it to you? Do you have some things to unpack and work on so they can lose the power of their words? You know, I know a lot of people have a lot of political fighting going on. They're, the children are very different than the parents in political conversations. We are non-political here. That's there's no st my stand is in the middle to bring families together that's my stand and how can you hear opposite conversations on politics and you know it's not true for you it's just people have different opinions and it's okay it's just part of life right yeah Rebecca that's so great you go Mimi you go Mimi I'm doing a podcast on the next right step maybe you want to go on my podcast with me and we'll do the next right step for you in five minutes. If you're game, message me, okay? Um, oh, you're welcome, Barbara. Let's see what else is saying. My husband's so sweet. <laughs> I said, please don't come in when I'm doing this live. You know, it could be 20 minutes or whatever, because I didn't want Fergie Birkin, because she goes crazy when, Fer when, you know, Terry comes home. And he just did it so gently. I just really touched my heart. Very, very beautiful. So Noreen, yes. When you apologize and the other person does not accept, it could be because of it. Could be that's one reason it could be. It could be a multitude of many. It might be if it's a really heavy, heavy apology or a heavy lifting one. You might have to do it several times, like I talked about with my mom. And it could be because of their some of their trauma. Absolutely, it could be many other things too. So that's just one possibility. Okay, I hope that helps. Okay. Yeah, Rebecca, I'm so with you. Actually, hang on, I'm going to show you something. Hang on, let me go get some. All right. One of the things that I do, sorry, I had to run over to my thing over here. I've got a little, like, what do I call it, a vision kind of altar that I, like, do my own quiet time in front of and things that are very precious to me I put on this, like, little, my son calls an altar, so I call it an altar. I don't know if I would use that word, but such is life. I have these two pictures. Let me show you. I've got this picture. Let's see. All right. That's my mama when she was 13. Okay? Now you're going to find out I'm not a real blonde if you thought I was. <laughs> That's me when I was four. Okay? Um, I love to tell a story that by the time I was 20, I had completely gray hair. Gray hair ones in my family, so I was completely gray by the time I was 20. And when I dyed my hair brown, I didn't even look like myself anymore because I look like a blonde. So that's why I stayed blonde. So these two pictures I keep around me daily. 
Let me put them, I always put them next to each other, okay? And it's my visual reminder that a 12-year-old or a 13-year-old raised this little girl. A 12-year-old or a 13-year-old that came from horrible abuse, very similar to what you're saying, Rebecca, and it gives me so much empathy and compassion for my mom. And um, that's another step of that forgiveness piece, right? And Maria, you're spot on. I've got lots of stuff coming up. One of them is the apology you'll never receive. Lots happening around books and such. Yeah, love that you're saying that, Lisa. Let's see if there's anything else. As important as the message. Spot on, Miss Mimi. Uh, I'm so glad, Michael. That touches me because I know you're so authentic. One of these days I'm coming to your company. I know I am, okay? You're welcome. Notes maybe you need to work on and more apologies like if you needed. Absolutely, Deborah. Just brilliant. Wherever you are, Deborah, looks exquisite. Yeah, I'm so glad you guys really like this. All right, let me see if there's anything else I need to see. You're welcome. I'm going to give away a prize. Oh, being forced to apologize. Remember when you had to do that when you were four? It doesn't work. <laughs> we can ha Actually, that's a great topic, Barb. I'm going to write it down. Forced to apologize. I have some ideas on how to do that. Okay, beautiful. <laughs> Mimi, thanks. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about that, the altar. Uh, okay, let's see if there's anything you're saying that I need to address. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, June, absolutely. I will put that up here as soon as I'm done. All right, I'm about to give away, well, when I walked, I'm, what's gonna, I would take my phone over there, but it keeps doing wonky stuff. So hang on, let me get the prizes and I'll come back, someone's gonna win, okay? prizes I have. I have two masks. Kindness is contagious. Kindness is contagious, both white and black. They're awesome. Actually, you can use, because the new recommendation is to double up for now. Excuse me. So um, someone's about to win these two masks, and I'm going to give away this book. Um, I've given a lot of these books away. I have it um, digitally, and this one was, was given to me by the author, Carrie Hummingbird, who I've done lives on her book. She does a lot about healing mother wounds. And this book is called Love is Fierce. I'm gonna give you the one that she signed for me. So someone's getting this exquisite book. And these two masks, they're gonna to go together, US only, okay? And um, so here, I'm gonna tell you something to type in. First person that I see in my feed that has typed in what I say is um is gonna win okay you have to be u.s based and um all right i'm gonna make it really really simple the first person to type in the word it's a very simple word and it's with the first one that shows up in my feed it shows up differently in everybody else's feed sorry about that is the word yes just yes first yes and see what happens. Sometimes it takes a minute or so, or 30 seconds or so. First yes gets us US based, two masks, and love is fierce. Let's see. Mary. Mary Materna, it's you. Yay. Just so you know, Sandra, I did that for you because you're not a fast type. <laughs> okay, because Sandra always says, Oh, I never win. I can't type that fast. That's why I did it. So Mary, all you gotta do is message us here on Facebook with your address and your email. And we don't sell anybody's email, I promise. We use your email so you can keep track of the tracking um, in the, with the post office, okay? I love that you guys all played and I love that you're all yeses to effective apologizing. How's that? So Mary, make sure you get me that message. Next week, the topic is picking your battles, um, discerning the next right step. Like, you know, I look at what I do as a consultant is people come to me, we might find a 100 problems to solve. Okay, in communication, we go through a process of picking the most important ones that will help domino the others, right? So the same is true in my household. I've got like a hundred challenges with my husband. <laughs> and um, I have to pick and choose my battles and where I'm gonna put, and battles, it's, I don't know if I technically use that word, but it's good for a headline, okay? 
um, picking your battles and discerning what's the next right step, okay? Um, Mary, congratulations on winning. Look at everybody congratulating you. That's so cool. And if you find this broadcast helpful, please share. When you share, whether it's this broadcast or one of our posters or just go out of your way to share us, it impacts us getting funding from people like General Motors. And General Motors is a sponsor tonight. I love General Motors. I love General Motors. And I love the people that I get to work with at General Motors. They are truly delicious human beings. Yeah, It's neat to be at a position in my life that I own. I, I have like a no asshole rule, excuse the language. I only work with amazing people. And um, GM is definitely some of, me, some, of the, some of the most amazing people I've ever worked with, including Reggie and Polly. Um, yeah, so that's it. Okay, big love. All right, and uh, I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.